Although I use 3D printing in almost every project, I've not discussed it specifically yet in a video, so let's do that today. GD Tech has sent me their new Q1 Pro 3D printer, so let's get it set up and test it out, and I'll show you how I use 3D printing in combination with fiber laser cutting and CO2 laser cutting, and we'll make some functional parts and some improvements around my workshop. This is my third GD Tech printer, and it looks like it's got some nice features. It's got a heated chamber, automatic bed leveling with dual sensors, it's got a dual metal extruder that can go up to 350 degrees Celsius, so it supports most filaments. It's got independent dual Z-axis motors, filament runout and wrapping detection, and it's a fast Core XY machine running Clipper firmware. So let's see how it prints. I power it on and follow the on-screen setup instructions. It instructs me to remove the cable ties that secure the extruder during shipping. And then it has me remove the four screws holding down the build plate. I then load the little bit of filament they provided and ran the auto bed leveling procedure and then the input shaping procedure. Next I printed the preloaded Benchy test file to make sure everything was working correctly. And it looks fine so let's start having some fun. If you're new to my channel I've spent the past year and a half about um, building and retrofitting machines to outfit my workshop with different capabilities. Um, let me just I'll give you the quick tour real quick. Uh, have a fiber laser engraver, um, some more GD Tech 3D printers, injection molding machines, um, mini CNC lathe, CO2 laser, uh, some metal working tools, uh, a CNC router, a fiber laser cutter, and my last project is this uh, CNC mill. Um, as you can see here, um, I've just finished the project, but I have all these tools um, in this tray that I want to get out of here so when I'm uh, working on a job, I can set the tools I'm using in this tray. So I need to find somewhere to put all this stuff. So I was thinking um, I have some more space below all those tools. Might uh, make another rack right here to hold some of these and get them out of the way. Okay, I've laid out all the tools here so I can take some measurements for the design. Here's the design I came up with in Fusion 360. I'm going to 3D print the black base and then laser cut the stainless steel top plate to conceal the mounting holes. I have a new roll of black PLA, so let's load it up so we can print. All right, we have filament. I export the model from Fusion so I can import it into Chidi Slicer. I've sliced the model and everything looks good, so let's send it over to the printer via Wi-Fi. Okay, the file is sent and it's heating up. This is my first time using the new Chidi Slicer. I believe it's based on Prusa Slicer. And I really like how it has the integrated fluid interface. It makes remotely interacting with the printer really simple. I guess we got about uh, seven hours and we'll see what happens. While we're waiting for that to finish printing, let's go ahead and cut out the stainless steel top plate. I've already loaded up a piece of two millimeter thick stainless steel, a scrap from another job, and I've already set up the file in the RD Cut -us software. So let's cut this thing out. All right, here's the finished top plate. I uh, cleaned up a few burrs and countersunk some uh, holes for the screws. It looks like it's almost done printing. Well, that looks like it turned out really nice. It's 
see how it works with my top plate. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks like I need to drill some holes and remove the support uh, at the bottom. And we can get this installed. Let's make sure everything fits before I drill holes to install it on the machine. I think that's going to work pretty well. I've printed out a drill guide, so I'll cut that out and tape it right here so I can drill some accurate holes to mount it. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's load it up with the tools. Okay, I think that's gonna work awesome. All right, we're halfway there. Now I need to do something uh, with all these collets. Um, I designed a, a collet holder tray for my smaller collets for my other machine. So let's uh, make the same thing and uh, it'll stack on top of these. I've adapted the rack to fit the new collet size. All the black parts get 3D printed, and the rest gets laser cut out of MDF. I've imported the files into Chidi Slicer and sliced the models, so let's send them to print. The auto bed leveling seems to be working really well. Uh, the first layer of this print looks great again. Okay, while that's printing, let's go ahead and cut out the MDF parts. I get the files set up in Lightburn. I'm gonna cut out all of the interior shapes, and then I'll cut out the outlines after. I've got the file loaded and I've got it all the material in and ready to go in the laser. So let's cut that out. good and everything looks great All right, it looks good. I think that's gonna work. Awesome, now we have room for uh, the tools and use and stuff here. Um, one more thing while I'm working on this machine, um, I wanna keep the rotary axis installed here permanently, but um, whenever I'm working on a piece over here, um, it gets unnecessarily dirty and covered with uh, coolant chips. So I wanna make a cap for it so I can uh, I have to clean up so much extra mess. Here's the design I came up with. I took some measurements and made it large enough to fit over the three jaw chuck also. I get the file imported into Chidi Slicer and flipped 180 degrees so we don't need a ton of support material. I get it sliced and everything looks good so let's send it to print. And it's off. The first layer looks like it's great again. It's done. Right, well, like the others, it looks uh, really good. Pops right off. Boards pop right off. Let's see if it fits. All right. Cool. I think that's going to work. All right, while well, we're improving the uh, workflow for my mill, let's uh, do one more thing. 
It's my box of end mills and I have to basically dump it out to find what I need every time. Let's make a rack to uh, store all this stuff. Okay, I've got rid of some of the empty cases and I've spread out what I'm working with here. So let's see if we can come up with a tray to hold all this. I've modified my collet tray design and I've made some holes for what seem to be some of the standard sizes of the end mill cases. And I've made some extra holes for tools in the future. So let's see if this works. Okay, so from an end mill tray, I can just reprint out the same piece as before. There it is. All right, cool. I will laser cut the other parts while this prints. I get the file set up in Lightburn again and send it to the CO2 laser. All right, I have the base plate. I'm gonna put one at bottom, on the bottom to line these, and one on the top. All right, it's done. Losing pieces. Yep, it's as good as the last one. Cool. All right, I feel much better getting all those uh, quality of life things fixed about this machine. Finished up and now I'm ready to mill out some parts. Okay, since I'm on the kick of uh, organizing my tools for my machines, I think um, another one I need to do is for my my mini lathe. Um, I always end up grabbing all the tools from the door over there and bringing them over here when I need to work, but it'd be really nice to have them all right here. So I was thinking of designing a rack to go right here on the side and sit on that bar somehow and maybe have magnets at the top to hold it to the surface of the machine. I've laid out all the tools I want to try to fit. I have a tap holder, a live center, a drill chuck and key, a couple of collet tool holders and wrench, and the lathe chuck key. Here's the design I came up with. It's got the groove along the bottom to rest on that bar, and then I've put four slots in the back where I'll glue in some magnets to hold it securely. I've got the file imported into Chidi Slicer, got it sliced, so let's send it to print. Day. Looks like it's all done. Yeah, again, it looks really good. Nice, that came out easy. That did too. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, every print's look great so far. It's heavy too. I load it up to make sure everything's gonna fit before I glue in the magnets. Okay, the magnets are in there. I'll sit on that bar and it snaps right to it. All right, that feels like it's uh, really secure. I think that's going to work well. All 
All right, cool. That's gonna make working over here a lot more convenient. So my initial thoughts on this printer after using it for a couple of weeks, I've only tested it with PLA thus far, but um, every print has come off flawlessly. Um, so that's exciting. I've noticed up close you can really see the build plate moving up and down as the print head moves forward and backwards. So the bed clearly isn't level, but um, the auto bed leveling is clearly compensating for that because every first layer has looked great. Also their nozzle wiper in the back is an interesting feature. I'm used to having bits of filament around on my other machines that um, you know it'll, it'll leak out here and there but uh, the wipers uh, clean it off and it's pretty cool. Also having the camera is pretty neat uh, being able to take uh, time-lapse videos of everything. The filament spool holder is a little flimsy you can see it wobbling but it's getting the job done. I've had to re-enter my Wi-Fi uh, password and reconnect a couple times. Um, I'm not sure why it's losing that, but um, overall it's been a great experience. I'm looking forward to using this printer some more. If you're interested in purchasing the Q1 Pro, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description and I'll earn a small commission on the purchase uh, to help support the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.